G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the Eagles Corner. The Eagles have two new captains, co-captains for the second time under history in Oscar Allen and Liam Duggan being announced today uh, to lead the club going forward. And I've got to be honest, my first reaction is livid. I can't believe the club has messed up this, what I would have thought was a golden opportunity to make sure Harley Reid stayed by awarding him the captaincy in his first season. I mean, are, are the club even serious about trying to accelerate this rebuild and trying to get one of our prize recruits to stay at the club and not go to Geelong? I mean, seriously. Okay, I'm obviously joking. Uh, but it did cross my mind. I wonder if the West Australian was tempted to print that article at some point. It's early days. That article still might be coming, but we'll see. So uh, obviously, I've been, I've been trying to space out my Eagles videos. I realize the, there's a, bit, a fair bit of content, but there's been a lot of content in general on the channel. Uh, and I did my Best 22 video yesterday and thought, oh, that'll do for the Eagles for a little bit, and then sure enough, co-captaincy announcement. So just to give you my general thoughts, um, I first of all, this is just a harsh reminder that Luke Shuey is no longer playing for the West Coast Eagles, so that was a bit of a punch in the guts, but ultimately, um, it's an interesting decision because I would have thought that the, the choice between Allen and Duggan was inevitable in the sense that those were the two clear front runners, and that's reflected by the, the voting. So there was a player vote for this decision, um, and it said that, well, they didn't tell us who technically won, but they said it was very, very close and that uh, Tom Barras was third, but uh, a way behind in third. So the setup we're going here is with Alan Duggan co-captain and then a single vice-captain. Jeremy McGovern has stepped down from the uh, official leadership group, the formal leadership group, uh, largely due to, well, probably a couple of factors. One is maybe age, just because we're in a bit of a list transition here, obviously. 22 players under the age of 21. Um, that is half a list that is very, very young. And so perhaps, uh, you know, having a 31-year-old in the leadership group, I'm not sure if it would have been necessarily, you know, a massive downside, but obviously he's a little bit less in touch with that younger generation as opposed to Alan and Duggan, who are 24 and 26, respectively. Also, Jeremy McGovern's probably just got to focus on getting healthy and, uh, and staying on the park. He's got a two-year contract, and it's probably going to be his last contract as well. So it's a small, very small leadership group. Uh, I've seen at times previously the Eagles leadership group flex out to about 10, uh, but I suppose it will uh, ebb and flow with the needs of the team. Um, so I suppose in this case, they decided that a smaller leadership group with a lot of young players as well was a bit more appropriate. And the good thing about this, this dynamic here is that Allen and Duggan sort of offset and complement each other really well. Uh, it, when you first look at the age as well, Duggan's uh, three years older. I know he's 26 to 24, but he's, he's taken three drafts earlier. So he's still got more of that intimate connection with the, the older group, and there's still plenty of those guys on the list. And I still think of Duggan as a, a young guy. Same thing with Cole. I, I, I think the only reason is, even though they're 25 and 26 respectively, in Duggan, I think turns 27, I want to say in December. I think he's a late birthday kid. But I still think you of them is young because for years the Eagles had that, you know, a pretty mature best 22 and Duggan and Cole were often two of the younger players in the team. So regardless though, I feel like he's still in that happy in between age where he can still relate to the veterans and uh, they obviously respect him and, uh, and obviously the young guys as well. It seems like to contrast the two, Duggan is a lot more of a nurturing type. We saw an anecdote from Harvey Johnston who is uh, staying with Liam Duggan in his press conference about how Duggan, uh, the first thing Duggan told him was uh, about how important you know the rest of the the, the club is and the, and the staff and support staff and stuff like that, which um, obviously kind of validates the belief we had that Duggan's just a really nice guy. Um, but uh, you you get the sense that he is quite a nurturing captain. And Alan, I'm not saying he's not as such, but he seems a bit more of a on-field general and maybe more strategically minded. That's just an impression I get, uh, but they do make the comment that they um, they offset each other well. And I think the Eagles made a statement in saying that their the relative strengths of these two guys as leaders uh, sort of balance each other out. Um, so it kind of validates the decision to have two captains. So, I mean, what are my thoughts on the co-captaincy in general? Um, personally, I mean, I think leading up to this, I kind of wanted Oscar Allen, if I had to choose one. I would have thought both were worthy candidates, but I think I like... Uh, well, Alan's one of my favorite players, so there's a little bit of personal bias there. But I've just thought from the outside, Alan's leadership is a bit more palpable. It's a bit more obvious. You know, I think when he had his year off, he was uh, in the coach's box and learning heaps about the game and, and showing a lot of leadership there. And the way he talks and presents, he, he's a very clear captaincy choice. Uh, Liam Duggan, by the sounds of it, is a little bit more behind the scenes and leads from within the club um, really well as well. So I've no qualms about either of them as captain. 
But as for, as far as co captains go, there's there's a bit of criticism. There's a lot of people out there who don't believe that it should be a real thing, and I'm not sure I agree. And the first thing that comes to mind is that there's several you know successful clubs uh, who have had multiple captains. I mean, Sydney have been doing it for as long as I can remember. Um, they've had multiple captains. GWS did the same thing, and they're a relatively successful club over the last you know ten years. Um, you know, in and around the finals consistently. And the Brisbane Lions obviously just lost the grand final, and uh, you know Harris Andrews and Lucky Neil are the co-captains there. So there's no actual like empirical evidence to suggest it doesn't work. Um, further to that as well, I think when you compare football to other sports and perhaps, you know, even just offices or workplaces, I should say, um, it, the dynamic's different. Uh, having played a bit of both and, and worked in, you know, obviously in a professional environment as well. I think the, the single title of a captain in a football team or football club is, is a little bit overrated. And I think there's there's tons of like informal leaders that take part in uh, in a club's culture. Also, when you contrast it to something like cricket, right? Uh, cricket is very, very different in the sense that it's a much more strategic role. There's, there's arguably more importance on who the captaincy goes to in cricket than there is on the coach in that sport because they're doing all the on-field strategic stuff. They play a role in selection. Um, that doesn't really exist in football. It's very much an on-field driving standards and uh, showing support to other players. And therefore, the need to have one concentration of power is diminished. In cricket, if you had two captains, it would be ridiculous because you'd be disagreeing on strategic decisions. Allen and Duggan have to decide which way to kick first. So who actually is the figurehead, I don't think is actually that important um, within the context of a football club. So I'm completely fine with that. I suppose the awkward thing though is if they ever do want to go to um, a single captaincy structure, what happens from here? Because Duggan's 27, he's still got plenty of football left. Allen's 24. Uh, the only way that they get back to that is if someone loses the captaincy. So I think this is a, is a fair commitment. These guys are going to be co-captains for a while, you'd think. In our previous example of having co-captains, I think it was 2001, and the logic of that, this is before I started watching football, but I've read about it, um, was to have the veteran Dean Kemp co-captain with the young 22-year-old Ben Cousins. And that was sort of bridging two generations within the West Coast Eagles. The uh, Obviously, the young side that went on to win in 06 versus the guys who played well throughout the 90s. There was a clear generational gap, and Ben Cousins at 22 probably wasn't ready to lead the club by himself. That didn't turn out so well. Um, Dean Kemp, I think, retired after playing eight more games. I think he had concussion issues. And then Cuz became sole captain the next year. Um, so, yeah, not a lot to go off there. But a very different situation, whereas I think this one is going to be set up for more longer term. And again, I don't see anything really wrong with that when you look at some some strong organizations who have favored that leadership structure. Um, I did read that Don Pike, obviously, he's just come from Sydney where that's a thing. Uh, I, I read that it wasn't his decision as such. He may have suggested it, though. Um, but I do think it kind of just feels right. And I think either one of these guys would have been unlucky. Barras is the vice captain. Uh, he was still popular, even though he came distantly third, apparently. Um, but yeah, I, I'm happy with that as well. Obviously, Barras a little bit older again. Oh, I think he's, he's a year older than Duggan, so maybe not that much older. But while apparently he is quite a, um, a good leader within the club, um, he also has this kind of laconic style. Um, so I don't know if he has the same sort of energy that might be required on game day to really lead people. I could be wrong. We're all judging from the outside here. Um, and we're not really equipped to be able to judge how good Luke Shuey was as a captain, how good Shannon Hearn was, even though people say great things about them. So we'll see. I think these guys make sense. This is not left field at all. Uh, other than obviously having a two two captain structure, um, that the actual choices themselves make sense. So I'm happy with it. And um, hopefully the new energy that's being referenced by the, the players at the moment, uh, it came up again in this press conference, the energy within the club at the moment with so much, you know, youthful enthusiasm, guys now trying to, uh, you know, make their careers, trying to drive the club back to where it used to be. There's a lot more motivation and the mindset seems a little bit different at the Eagles. So with a nicer injury list in the coming years, we should see some, some improvement. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts. But let me know in the comments, of course, what your thoughts are. Um, overall, I am quietly confident that this was the right decision. But as always, I look forward to your input. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.